Okay. So, you saw the title of the video. Sorry. I literally started this for no reason whatsoever. I just wanted to look at the damn receipt. I don't know why. I wanted to see how much money I saved from my Barnes & Noble um, uh, membership. Today we're talking about Demon Slayer. <laughs> and there's really only, I would say, three saving graces of the story. If those three saving graces are not part of the story, this might be an irredeemable manga. And it's only three. It's only three. Three. Now, uh, the the reason, well, okay, let me explain, let me explain the pros first, so that I can just talk about the negatives all throughout the rest of the video. First, there are two demon backstories that I actually liked. And those demon backstories, those backstories were Akasa, or Akaza, whatever you want to call him. And I forgot his name, but the number one demon who isn't Luzon. And those are only the two different backstories that I actually liked. And the reason I only liked those two backstories was because uh, it, like they're demons, but it didn't sympathize with them. It showed us how they became demons and that they were once human and that, you know, they, you know, that they, you know, uh, loved and hated and did all this other stuff. And it showed them, you know, that they were actually like human beings. But it doesn't try to redeem the characters very much. It just tries to show you, well, these characters were actually characters, not just bloodthirsty motherfuckers, okay? <laughs> motherfuckers, okay, that's what I wanted to say. Third, and it's probably the only reason I haven't sold Demon Slayer, and it's because of the backstory of Zenitsu. Yes, Zenitsu. My favorite character in Demon Slayer. I might do an entire video on Zenitsu. If you want, if you want to know why, go watch Harsh Reviews. His name, his channels, I've talked about him before. His channel is literally called Harsh Reviews. He he made a video on Zenny 2. It's basically all my thoughts. He just but repeats them better than me. So I basically agree with the way Zenny 2 thinks, he works, the way he the way he acts. I basically agree with all of that. Well, not you know, him being a pussy. I don't agree with that. But you know, it's whatever. Those are the only three saving graces that I find in Demon Slayer. Now, let's talk about the bad. First, the artwork. The artwork, the artwork and the action is atrocious. Like, if you want to, if you saw the anime and you're like, well, the manga probably has good artwork because the anime had amazing animation. So, the manga probably has good artwork. It doesn't. Like, every single shot just feels awkward. Like, these character proportions, especially with the face, makes no, they just look like like puppets or dolls like the only way when the only time they look good is when they do a close-up shot if you're far away or you're even like in the middle like a regular freaking manga volume your face is just gonna look weird like look at tanjiro here like that doesn't look like tanjiro you look like you're three years old you your forehead is so big like you don't look like a human being. The proportions are off. Also, the artwork is super scratchy. Like, they don't use an ounce of shading in... Or they do use shading, but it's very little, and it's not good. The shading is not good. There's not very good art techniques. And take this as someone who used to be an artist, okay? I know about this shit, alright? This is easy work. Like, it's... N like, obviously, it's hard to create manga. It's very, very hard. But if you were just the artist, you're just the artist, it's not very hard to be creating these these pictures. The only thing that I would say looks good are the demons. And the um the demons and the animals. Those are the only things that look good. The humans and the backgrounds and the the 
um, the weather and the you know the sound effects, sound effects, all are pretty bad. And it's just the tr the drawing, like just the way they drew it, is just scratchy and it just feels like chip, not smooth. It just feels like it doesn't feel crisp. It doesn't feel sharp. It just feels like like you're just scribbling. You know what I mean? It feels like a bunch of rough a rough sketches that they just drew a bunch of rough sketches. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like this entire thing, they didn't go over. <laughs> Second, the way they handle the characters. There is not a single character besides Zenitsu that goes through an arc. It's usually just, oh, I'm a demon, I did something bad, and now I'm going to hell. Awesome. Great. Uh, there's no character progression. Tanjiro doesn't grow as a person. He is... He starts out as a kind weakling who's also ha who's very brave, good sense of smell, and um, and likes his family. And he ends the story by those exact same quotes. Doesn't grow a single inch. Doesn't even grow. He grows in combat skill, but the thing is, it's it's not like he trained for this combat skill. You know what I mean? Like. Most of the time when he learns something new, like the, the flame breathing or the, the observation shit or whatever it was, like, it's, he doesn't, like, practice it. It's not like he can call back. He, okay, let's take the fire breathing. This, yeah, fire breathing or sun breathing for an example. Okay, sun breathing, it would, he, like, when he was fighting Rui, he just thought of it and we didn't even know about it. Like, it would, be, it would be one thing if he talked about his father and then he remembered it. And he was like, oh, that's weird. And then he copied the ability. Then, you know, we could be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. We know what that's from. But no, he just remembers his dad doing some weird-ass dance. And he's like, shit, I got to do this now, too. Even though he has no clue that this would work. And he just does it. And then he wins. But he doesn't actually win. He doesn't slice his head off. But Rui slices his own head off, which doesn't make sense because he said his threads are are not as powerful as his neck, so he can't. So that means it's physically impossible for him to cut his threads off with his own neck. That doesn't make any fucking sense. So basically, it's all bullshit. <sighs> this story has so many plot holes. Don't even get me started on Wisteria. Shit makes no sense. Like if you're gonna add something in the story. Like basically a demon repellent. Why don't you just use it throughout the entire time of the story? Like why isn't there mis wisteria trees just blooming everywhere in the earth? It's not that hard. It's not like you need government officials to recognize it. You know what I mean? Like apparently they're not related to the government of any kind, right? All they gotta do is just send some people out, bloom some cherry trees along the city or whatever, or along anywhere, and boom, you're fucking done. Demons can't go nowhere anymore. Just take some highly populated places that the demons go to, boom some fucking trees up, and then the demons all gone. They have to come out to the open, either get burned by the sunlight, or demon slayers kill them. That's all that happens. That's all you gotta do in the story. That's all you gotta do. And for some reason, you need to have these fucking actual demon slayers who are risking their lives to do this shit. Oh my god, shit makes me so mad. In this story, nothing makes sense. Absolutely nothing. All the characters make no sense. Um, the only Hashira I probably like. Okay, if I have to rank the Hashiras, I'm gonna talk about this. I have to rank the Hashiras. It would be Rengoku first, because I I actually cried when Rengoku Rengoku died. It's not a spoiler. It's in the anime. Everyone watched the movie. Uh, then probably Tengen. I like Tengen Uzumi. Then probably this is where I forgot all their names. Then probably the guy who can do mist breathing, who's uh, a descendant of the other guy, of the sun breather. Probably that guy. And for some reason he's a descendant, like he just is a descendant, but for some reason can't use sun breathing for like no reason. And then there's a bunch of like sh shitty things where it's like, oh, if my blade turns red, then I can kill this demon. Why? Why? Did it turn hot or whatever? And it's also really hard for it to turn red, especially when it's a black and white, black and white art book. Not art book, but you know, comic. 
Like, there is some, sh I know there's some shading or ways of shading that you can shade it a certain way at a certain uh, pressure point, not pressure point, but you know, at a certain pressure that makes it look like different colors, which is actually pretty easy to do. Again, I've done art before. It's pretty easy. But if you're going to go through, you know, the damn, like, if you're going to go through the artwork and tell me that shit looks like water, and that shit looks like fire, and that shit looks like earth, or whatever, you're lying. Except for thunder breathing, which obviously has like the static effect of thunder. Everything just looks like, like a slice, like a sword slice, that's it. And they're all using swords. Like, there's one guy that uses a goddamn gun. I was expecting some other weapons. What if someone had a, a, a Darth Maul kind of like, but it's a, like a staff, so it's like just a cylinder block of the fucking steel. But it, and then there's a handlebar, so it's a damn staff, and then you whack, and you use the staff to, you know, whack the shit off of the heads. That would be fucking sick. What if someone used, like, shurikens or some shit? Or the Kanana, the thing that Raphael uses from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. What if someone used that or some shit? Like, there's so many, this so, series has so much potential, and it just doesn't deliver on any of them. On any of them. Series makes me sick. It just does. There's no point in. I'd say, only read it if you want to get into manga. If you're start, if you're watching this video, um, if you're watching this video and you only have like two manga series on your shelf or one manga series on your shelf, you should get Demon Slayer because it's a good basis. Stuff like Demon Slayer and My Hero Academia, which I, I didn't read, but I watched the anime. I watched like season two. Um, those are good. I'm just gonna assume my hero getting me a manga is good. Uh, <laughs> those are good shit to, um, you know, start with. I'm not gonna speak for my hero academia, because I haven't read it yet, but I probably will. Actually, I will read it eventually. But if you, if you've read shit like Dr. Stone, Q, One Piece, um... Kaguya, Summer of Love is War, Black Clover, Death Note, A School Frozen in Time, Full Metal Alchemist, uh, Blue Lock, Beast Stars, literally promised Neverland, any other series, Chainsaw Man. Do not read Demon Slayer. Naruto, Bleach, I haven't read those series, but they're probably good. I mean, everyone buys them. The box sets are nowhere to be found anyway. Don't read Demon Slayer. I got it on a whim. I got it for cheap. It was like $110 for the box set. So I got it. I can see why it was $110. Because it wasn't good. <laughs> and I watched the anime. I like the anime good enough. I think the anime is just... If you want to experience Demon Slayer, watch the anime. Just follow along with the anime. If you've watched till season 2 of the Entertainment District... And you wouldn't know what's happening. Trust me. Have patience and watch the anime. Sometimes when I'm looking at the art in Demon Slayer, I don't even think about how, how good or bad the art is. I'm just like, this shit's going to be animated good when it comes out in the anime. <laughs> this shit's going to be looking fire in, it, in the animation. <laughs> and I don't even recognize the art because the art's so mediocre. It's, it, go, it ranges to like decent or good to just straight up shit it just makes me so mad how just it there's so many things they could have done with demon slayer like even as i was reading i was like couldn't have they just done this or couldn't they have done that not like the character wise i'm talking story wise i'm like wouldn't this shit be more impactful if they did this shit or this shit or this or this or this and it just it just hurts you inside because you know the story can be better. You know the story has so much more potential. You know the story has, you know, can do all these things. If it wasn't just, no, it just, it feels like the author didn't care. It feels like after the first chapter, they didn't care. I mean, I could go on and on about Demon Slayer. I like Zenny too. That's all I gotta say. Um... And to people who say Dainitsu's shit because after that spider fight, um, I'm going to do a video on Zenitsu. Eventually, I'm probably doing this. I don't know. I'm running out of video ideas, so I'll probably do one on Zenitsu. 
If if someone is telling me Zenitsu shit because of the spider scene when he was facing that one spider and then he didn't learn anything, it's not that wasn't a character arc moment for him. That's not a character arc moment for Zenitsu. You're reading his mind, yes, you can peer inside of Zenitsu's mind, but he's thinking that 24-7. Every time he goes up against a demon, anytime he sees one, anytime he cries, he's thinking that shit 24-7 about how he hates himself and how he's all alone and all this other shit. It's not like this is some revolutionary moment for him, okay? Like, he just thinks about this 24-7 and it kills him inside. And that's just what happens to him. And now you finally get to know why Zenitsu is the way Zenitsu is. And it's a beautiful story. Because immediately when you see Zenitsu, you're like, this is a loser, he's a pussy, he, he's a terrible person, he's not a man at all. You know, he cries all the time. And obviously you're thinking that, and then it turns out, and then the story turns a 180 on you and goes, well, yeah, he is. That's the point. That's the point of the character. He, the, the story, the character, the, the author, or the mangaka, wants you to hate Zenitsu so his story is even more impactful. He wants you to get annoyed at Zenitsu because everyone got annoyed at Zenitsu. We all saw that one kid who could not do anything, no skill whatsoever. He could only kill demons with his eyes closed or when he's sleeping or whatever the fuck. That's all we saw in him. We only saw that usefulness inside of him. And there was none except for one person that was his master. Or whatever his name was. I forgot what his name was. And he saw potential in him. And he cared for him. And he, he took pity in him. And he took him under his wing. And he was the only one who just saw a kid who was alone. All of us, the audience, we saw this, this pussy, this coward, this loser. And he just saw a kid who wanted friends. Who was alone. Who had no one to go to. And it's beautiful how... We can be like, or we can just say, oh yeah, I'd definitely be friends with Zenitsu. I wouldn't leave him alone. Except we did throughout the entire journey of the show up until that point. So now you can understand where Zenitsu is coming from. Yeah, he has some, you know, things to work on, you know, being just a crybaby about defeating demons. But that doesn't mean he's a bad person. Yeah, he's scared of demons. But he still goes, you know... He still fights the demons. He still goes up to them. He still fights the demons. Even, how do I explain this? I'm gonna end it here with Zenitsu. Even, don't judge, it's basically the message, don't judge a book by its cover. Because he was going through something that none of us knew. And if you got mad at Demon Slayer, because because Zenitsu turned up to be this entire other person and then you know or you got mad at Demon Slayer that was just you know that the brand Demon Slayer that it was this huge moment and then he didn't change you didn't understand the message of that moment you didn't understand it I'm sorry you just didn't understand it listen we can all have our opinions I'm a huge believer of everyone having their own opinions all right but I Think. Me personally, I think that that moment is amazing. And it feels like the mangaka wanted to create the story just to create that Zenitsu plotline. And obviously he couldn't be the main character because we had already know the insight of the, the story. Or of the character. So we had, to, we had to make him a side character. Obviously, you know, Sky, he get, he's funny. You know, he's fun, but he gets annoying sometimes. You know, he changes throughout the story as well. But it's like very subtle changes, and then he's basically the same at the end of it. <sighs> it's just, it feels like it's a copy and paste of every... It feels like you just take any other shonen, combine them together, and then you got Demon Slayer. That's all Demon Slayer is. What are we at? 19 minutes? Oh my god, we're 19 minutes. I rambled for 19 minutes. Holy shit. Alright, I'm gonna end the video here. Demon Slayer... Good story, sorry, good one character and good two backstories. And to be honest, those two backstories and characters actually like make the, make the manga. Like this manga without them, I already said this, it would be a zero out of 10. It would be insulting how bad it is. But it brought it up six points. I actually made it a six out of 10.
I think this is a 6 out of 10. I'll be honest. I really do. I probably will have to reread it, at least the Zenny 2 parts, to really get a grasp on how I feel about the story. Because my opinion is constantly changing. Sometimes I think it's an amazing story. Sometimes I think it's a, the shittiest thing I've ever read, even with the Zenny 2. Back. Back. It deserves to be dropped. Okay. Uh, I'll see you all later. Next video. I don't even know, man. I'm just going with the flow here. <laughs> Alright. See ya, bye. Okay, crazy.